All right, Henry, Henry, are you in here? Yeah, hi. You're going to make me a host? Yeah, I'll make you the host. Alan was having some trouble. Yeah. We underwent a big password change at work, so he can't, like, get into it. So well, I'm um, on the phone with him, so I know. Yeah, thank you. All right, yeah, I will switch you in. Hold on, see if I can do this for my phone. I haven't for a while. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still here. Sorry, I'm just okay. So it's ten people waiting to get in. I will let them in now. All right, That'll perfect. Be... Okay, you guys are all set. Have a good meeting. Thank okay, you. thank you. Um, but why can't I? Okay, hold on, everybody. If you can hear me. Okay, Ellen. Okay, uh, Ellen should be here already, and Shoshana is here. Ellen, start your thing, please. And are you uh, saying Ellen or Alan? Ellen, Alan can't get on. Okay, I'm here. I'm driving, so my camera is off. Okay, okay, that's fine, as long as I can hear you. Yep. Um, there's a bunch of people waiting to get on. Um, Orion, I'm going to allow you to talk. Who are you, please? I'm a student from UMass. I'm interested in community meetings. Okay, I'm going to promote you to panelists so you can speak and be seen. Um, Alexander, who are you? Um, I'm also at the University of Massachusetts, and I'm an Arbor Culture major, and um, I Welcome. just wanted to tune in. Yeah. yeah, I'm promoting you to panelists as well. And Patrick, is that the same? Patrick, you there? Oh. Okay, you don't have to be picked. Okay, and who's the iPhone person? Okay, everyone's able to talk. We'll try that. And Hi, that's me. I'm on my phone. Okay. Cool, Ann. Yep. Um, that's iPhone. Okay, so I will promote you to panelist. And if you can change your name when you're on, that'd be good. Or maybe you can't. Maybe I can change your name. No, I guess I can't. Oh, I can rename you, yes. Okay. We're getting a late start. I apologize, everyone, because... Uh... Oh, Alan, are you still on the phone? Sorry. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can... Sure. Um, but if you're... Uh, if you're... Um, log in like from the library or something you can just uh, or from a different computer not as yourself um, you can just join from the public link am I able to get promoted it didn't seem to go through hold on one second sorry what was that am I able to get promoted to a panelist it didn't seem to go through I thought I did uh, uh, I didn't see it Julian there we go more Promote to panelist. Okay. Thanks. Okay. It's panelist. I'm looking for that too. Hold on, everybody. Meeting ID. Um, yes, it's uh, webinar ID 848. Seven five one four zero oh, seven six nine. Okay. Okay, good. And I will promote you to panelists as well. 
Let me just uh, get back to that screen. Okay, so Alan Snow's iPhone, remote to panelist. Okay, do we have a quorum at this point? Ellen, are you still there? Yep, I'm here. Okay, we have a quorum. We can start the meeting. Alan should be here also. Okay, um, good. Yeah. All right, welcome everyone. Sorry for the delay. Um, we'll start off um, just hearing from our visitors. Brooks, you're a regular, so you don't necessarily need to add anything. Um, Alexander? Want to tell us a little bit about yourself? No? Or Patrick? We like to hear from our guests, but if you don't want to talk, I suppose that's all right. They might need they might need to get reminded to uh to uh click on the audio. Okay. Um, they're able to speak, so. Okay. Um, you would have to unmute if you want to talk, Alexander or Patrick. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, this is Alexander. Okay. Tell us a bit about yourself, and we'll tell you what, you know, what you need to know from us. Uh, so I started studying trees in high school because I went to Evoke school, and uh, I'm a sophomore this year at UMass. Um, I'm getting my associate, so I should be graduating this year with um, my, you know, degree in arboriculture and community forest management. So I um I would like to go into probably like municipal tree work um, rather than working for a company, but uh, we'll see. I could also work for an arboretum. I could be very happy doing that. Um, but I love trees. I want to plant them. I don't want to cut them down, and um, that's why I'm here. That's great. Well, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, actually, before we go further, since um, Bennett's not here, um, who will, can somebody be the secretary and take the minutes? It may have to be Shoshana or Julian. Um, I have to leave like a little bit early, so it's probably not a good idea for me to do the minutes. It would probably be good for someone that can stay the whole time. I'm on my phone, so I can't type the minutes at the same time. How about Brooks? <laughs> um i can try i'm um i'm kind of klutzy at computer stuff but uh i can try so like open up a like a doc and like yeah. you type it as as we're meeting yes that's all right thank you all right i'll give it a shot okay henry i could also chair and you write minutes if you want to do it that way okay except that i'm sort of organized to chair and okay. you got it in front of that fine yeah, no that would be a great idea. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> okay, so Brooks will be the secretary. Um, okay, we haven't heard from Orion. Hi, I'm uh, also a sophomore at UMass, and I'm majoring in urban planning, um, specifically the focus in transportation. Um, a big part for me of building good communities and places people want to be in um, cities, towns, make people happy, uh, is having uh, greenery and green spaces. So I'm interested in learning more about how that happens and the work that goes into it. All right. Well, thank you and welcome. Okay. Did we hear from everybody who wanted to speak? Uh, I guess we didn't hear from Patrick, but that's all right. All right. Um, any other comments from the public? Okay. Well, we run these meetings pretty informally. Uh, feel free to speak up, any of the visitors or, of course, members too. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Alan, is that you? No? Okay, otherwise you can stay oh. muted. Not quite hearing that, but all right. Um, all right, so I will... Um, Share my screen with the agenda for those who don't have it. Um, all right, so you can all see that. The first step is approving the minutes from the July and August meetings. Um, 
Does anybody have any corrections to make from the minutes? No? Well, uh, all in favor of approving the July minutes, thumbs up. Aye. Okay. And how about the uh, September minutes? Yeah. Good. So we I, only... was, I wasn't there. Well, you can still approve, <laughs> accept the minutes as written. Okay. I accept the minutes as written. <laughs> there. Okay. Good. All right. So both were approved, and I will get those onto the town website. Um, okay. So uh, we'll do hours later. Alan, you want to do the tree warden report? Can you do that? You'll have to unmute. Well, now we can hear you. Yes. Okay. I'm not hearing anything. Me neither. I'm not getting much. Oh, that's, I'm just getting it from the phone, Alan, and we're not hearing you on the computer. If you're getting it from the phone, could you hold the phone up to the computer, Mike Henry? I could. If Alan can unmute, maybe I can unmute him. He's, uh, he's muted, so maybe that's the problem. I'm asking him to unmute, but I don't know if that'll work. All right, Alan, just speak loudly. I'm going to put my phone up to, I don't know where the speaker is on the computer, but. Probably along the side, maybe. Oh, you are in. Oh, no, I know what I have to do. Hold on. It's good. Hold on. All right, try it now. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, that's, no, that's good. All right. Um, sorry, everybody, about all the confusion. I, the town has a new password program which everyone's being forced to update and uh i updated it at the end of the day seemed to work fine from my work computer and i've been locked out of pretty much everything um <laughs> related to town so um i apologize for all of the confusion um let's see um not a lot to report on as far as changes or updates um and working on the third Saturday tree planting. Um, I've got a list of folks who want trees planted this fall. Um, yeah, no tree hearings coming up. Um, working on uh, kind of activating the um, work request part of our new tree inventory so that um, I can utilize it as a, a work request program to track, you know, materials and time and labor and things like that. Um, so it's a bit of a process to get things synchronized with, with town resources on that end, but it's, it's happening slowly. Um, yeah, I think that's about it for updates. I'm trying to keep things watered until they drop their leaves. Very dry. That's about it. Okay, thank you, Alan. Um, I'll do the chair's report next. Um, let me see what, yeah. Um, I don't have a lot of stuff. Um, I'm looking forward to the planting on October 19th. And um, in the newsletter, it said that this is the last planting of the month. And on Facebook, it said that, but actually we're gonna do probably a work day for November and also in December. So we'll keep you posted on that. But it's not the last work day of the year. So, um, but October 19th, nine o'clock on Northampton Road. Um, Edward, are we doing Northampton or are we doing the North Common project? Alan? Um, good question. I would need my. I actually don't remember when we said we were going to do the uh, North Palm. Yeah, I don't either. I think we're doing the Northampton Road. Okay. Huh. I remember talking like back in, I don't know, it must have been July, I guess, or I don't know, it was a while ago yes. where we were talking about um, doing um, the common 
and but then in the newsletter it said Northampton Road. So then I made the event on Facebook for Northampton Road. Um, so I like I think now like we really should stick with Northampton Road because that's like the word that's out there now. And maybe yeah. no, North I apologize. I did, November I did questions. Northampton Road is this, the third Saturday planting. Okay, um, good. I didn't. I don't remember when we said we were going to do the um, common plant, the uh, town hall planting, wildflower, pollinated garden. Okay, so we'll stick to Northampton Road. Yeah, we were originally going to do a planting, a wildflower garden in front of town hall, and that got kind of postponed, and we were going to add a few trees to the common project at that time, but probably have to wait till spring for that. Sounds good. Um, is that the rest of your update, Henry? No, I, one more thing is um, I started working on an op-ed column about the um, town tree inventory. I sent it to Ellen for um, some feedback and uh, if I get that, I'll get it published as soon as I can. Um, and that's, that's about it for what I have, yeah. Julian, want to do the vice chair report? Sure, I was mostly just thinking about planning locations for spring um took a little bit of a ride around town look at some locations um so that's something to put on the potential agenda um for over the winter obviously the common um thinking north whitney street uh as well as some environmental justice planting like we've been talking about um as well as maybe in some areas like along Pine Street um, towards uh, towards like the intersection and that. Because um, they did the project, the North Amherst Common Project. Um, and I was just wondering, maybe we could add some trees there. Great. Why don't you um, send that list around to the committee so we'll all know it's a good start and then we can add to that list. Yeah, yeah. put it on Google Drive. Cool. Great. Thank you. All right, Sarah, we have a treasurer's report. I do not have an update. I apologize. Okay. So we'll postpone that and let um, me get the agenda back up here, at least for me. Social media website update. Julian and Shoshana. Yeah, I've been, uh, you know, posting stuff to our Facebook account, um, an event for our planting. Um, I found an interesting article through our newsletter. So, like, I'm, I'm liking the idea of, like, pulling stuff from the newsletter and then also putting it on our social media um, so that we can um, have, like, a continuity you know, with those two things, depending on, you know, how people want to interact with us. Um, so I shared that article about the uh, the tree that owns itself that got mailed out to everybody. I thought that was a fun little story. I got a response on our email um, from someone who read that and really loved that story. Yeah, story. So I was... I'm glad that um, whoever found it found it and then we'll be able to get it out through those different conduits. Yeah, I found it originally. Um, okay. For those who don't know, there's a podcast called This Old Tree, and it's a wonderful podcast. The episode that um, we put out with the newsletter and on Facebook was about a tree that owned itself. So it's, uh, there's some really cool things out there about trees, if you're interested in in public shade trees. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I was, I posted on Instagram the last time um, from our Gatehouse Road planting. And the other thing is I was in communication with the new town outreach and communications director um, to get uh, all of the public shade tree committees postings um, reciprocated on the official like town of Amherst um, web pages and social media and that sort of thing. That's great. That's great. Good. Uh, Shoshana, do you have a update from the um, town um, downtown planning group? 
Uh, yeah, I went to that um, and, you know, talked about the importance of mature trees on the street. Um, and there was a lot of uh, support for that from the other people. Most of the, um, like the, like most of the people were thinking about, like as far as their visions of downtown, it was mostly about like having more people actually live downtown. So there's a big push and a big like culture of thinking about like making more apartment buildings downtown. And that was the feeling that I got from a lot of the, uh, a lot of, definitely like from the people running it and from um, the people that were attending it. Um, Shoshana, I'm trying to like get this. So what, what meeting was this that you were at? It was the um, downtown design. Um, uh, they have some kind of special actual name for it. I'm not mm. sure what it's called, but let, let's just call it, I guess the di downtown design. Um, design standards. Design standards, yeah, that's it. I also went to this. Um, yes. And Dodson and Flinker is the landscape architecture group who's putting together these new design standards for Amherst. They're based in Northampton. Yeah. And the Flinker guy in particular, he was really pushing like more apartment buildings downtown. One just sort of question or comment maybe this isn't the official position of the committee but sort of getting across like we need enough setback in the buildings for trees to go in front of it um if you look at the one east pleasant street building there's just not room there for mature shade trees to grow and yeah. the same is true in the rear of the building if the rear of the building abuts a park or a parking lot or whatever also making sure there's enough room there, even if the developer has to lose three units in back and five units up front, I think it's worth it to have um, standards, design standards that are accommodating of planting space for large shade trees near the sidewalk and in public land downtown. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really agree with you, Julian. Uh, I think that that building at the north end of downtown is hideous. Um, you can barely get people crossing, you know, one going one way and one going the other without bumping somebody into the street, much less having trees planted there. Well, that'd be yeah. can, can I just <laughs> jump in for a second? Yes. Um, this was a major point of discussion at these workshops. I highly, highly encourage everyone, whether Shade Tree Committee or not, to attend any future community outreach and say these things. Um, but the those setbacks are tied to our zoning. So it really doesn't have anything to do with the with the design standards. They but the design standards could be used later on to inform zoning. So it's not actually gonna change any of those setback rules, but it is, it's getting the community thinking about those setbacks and what we really want the street state, streetscape to look like. Um, so if there ever is um, like, you know, an amendment to the zoning or any changing like that, then the Shade Tree Committee could have uh, an official recommendation to add to it. Um, but it's right now it's all tied to zoning and these standards, these community meetings are not currently going to change that. Um, it's all working within existing zoning laws. Well, to that regard, I was thinking that um, Julian, this would make a great letter to the editor, Julian or Brooks. So if you want to write something up and send that off on that specific issue, that would be probably very useful. Yeah. Make people weird that to the Gazette or to what were you thinking, Henry? The Gazette or the Bulletin, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe send it to the Gazette. It would be important for Northampton and other towns in the area too to, to be considering that. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. Uh, let's move on to the next part of the agenda. I'll share my screen again. Uh, so tree nursery care. 
Um, I know Julian's been mowing and watering. Um, we're planning to do a, a work day there. Um, hold on one second. Okay, I see what the problem is. Yeah. Um, we're planning to do a work day there in November, the second Saturday in November, and um, add more trees to the nursery and things like that. Anyone want to say anything else about that? Alan, I think, is not on any longer. No, I'm on. Oh, good. Okay. So I'm going to stop sharing so I can see the rest of you. Um, do you want to tell us more about that? Sure. Well, no. Oh, go ahead, Julian. I was just going to say I mowed it um, pretty recently, like maybe a week and a half ago with my push mower. Um, and I think Alan's been doing most of the watering. Last time I went there, it was still pretty, pretty damp. It wasn't bad, but he's been doing most of that. All right. Alan? Yes. Yeah. So we um been trying to keep it watered. Um again, we have the uh Don Redwoods that were donated to the town that we're gonna transplant into grow bags. So we have uh I think it was close to close to 20 of those, 18 or something like that of those, um to um to transplant um in November. Uh, I still need to get uh, word from the from Bigelow's on the nursery that provided the bare root stock for the oaks that failed that didn't didn't leaf out at all. Um, so once I get that word, hopefully we'll get a credit for next year for more trees. Okay, good. So that's exciting. It's, I'm really happy about this project and that it's expanding. I think it's a good project for us to be doing. So it is work we have to do. So yes, but uh, good. Yeah, I think there's uh, 19 of those Don Redwood trees. Great. And those were given to you by the Northampton Tree Committee that had yep. extra? Yeah. What is good. a Don Redwood? Metasequoia glyptostriboides. The uh, Latin <laughs> name for it. So, Which okay, is something I should, but do not know. <laughs> yeah. So those are those are not natives. It sounds like they are not. No, but they are a very, you know, good tree. Uh, you know, they're deciduous conifer, so they drop their needles, um, but they have a cone, um, and uh, they have a you know a kind of a reddish bark that's very light and kind of papery. Um, they have a, a very buttressed trunk root flare, um, like you would imagine a redwood having. They look an awful lot like a bald cypress as well, if you're familiar with bald cypress. Um, and uh, I've been planting and you know a number of them around town over the years. Um, they get very large, um, relatively tolerant of many soil types. Okay. They do not. Um cause problems like some invasive species would so okay yeah we are not strictly planting natives we favor natives but because of all the pests and attack on so many tree species we're trying to diversify as much as possible so when we find a tree that is beautiful and fits the the habitat um as long as it's not invasive we will use that and try to diversify our canopy so, okay right? other questions on that Hi, um, it's Gina Etheridge. I do have a question. Yes. Welcome. Alan, these trees that you all are talking about, are those, <clears throat> let's see, there's a house, how to describe it. It's not far from the college and it has one on either side of the driveway, these huge trees that look a little bit like cypresses. Mm -hmm. Those are, uh, you're talking about Woodside Ave um, on the other side of, um, South Pleasant Street from Amherst College. It's yes. on the west. Side. Yeah, yeah. So that's Woodside Ave. There are two very mature old species specimens there. Um, those are Don Redford. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And if if anybody glad wants to see, a glad to see, I'm remembering yeah. some things. Great. <laughs> it's a it's a great place to go to see what Don Red would become. So it's a nice they're nice examples. And they are related to. The California redwoods, but don't get as big as that. <laughs> okay, uh, second Saturday work days. So it looks like we're pretty set. October nineteenth, Northampton Road, um, November whatever the second Saturday is, we'll be at the Tree Nursery, which is on Station Road, 
And these plantings are nine to noon generally. And um, yeah, and then December, we're gonna have a work day to build um, cages to protect the trunks of a lot of the trees that we've planted already. Second Saturday in December. Okay, anything to say about that? All right, town tree. Oh, go ahead, someone. Okay, town tree um, inventory. We had an inventory of the trees done. It was very informative. Uh, that's I'm using that for the basis of the op-ed column I'm writing. Um, Alan, you mentioned a little bit about next steps. Anything else to say about that? Um, I just want to say, I, if you were able to get the link from Henry that gave you the community viewer to view the tree inventory online. Um, and what I'm looking for is input from the committee on the inventory and the information that we're sharing and whether you find it useful, if you think there's something else we should be sharing regarding the inventory in town trees. Um, one of the things that came to mind was that I should probably add a list of streets that have not been inventoried um, so that people can see where we have, we have, still have work to do, so. Yeah, that would be a good addition. I found it super useful. I found it really interesting. Um, I only sent it out to community mem to committee members. Um, are we still not putting it out to the wider town? Correct. I'd, I'd like to get the input from the committee first, and then um, we can broadcast it, you know, live, and people will be able to go to, you know, we'll post the link on the web pages and whatnot for people to view. So, sure. How many people on the committee have looked at the um, the inventory? The link I sent. Julian. What was that? Sarah, I have. I'm okay. I'm driving, so I'm sorry if my okay. reception is spotty. Well, probably the best thing would be for um, all of us to send, send it, pass it around by email, and then we can send it to Alan as one thing. So if you have comments, Sarah and Julian and uh, um, Shoshana and Ellen and everyone else, please look at it. It's It's actually quite informative. One of the things I discovered from looking at it is that approximately one third of all our street trees are maples. So that was interesting to see. And we have 159 different species of trees planted in town, which is impressive. So anyway, uh, you can also read my op-ed column, but um, send. let's try to send Alan stuff before our next meeting and we can discuss it at the meeting. Okay. Okay, next, um, environmental justice neighborhood plantings. Ellen, can you talk? Yep. Um, yeah, we were very excited uh, to apply for a DCR grant um, to do to plant approximately 40 to 50 trees um, in not the um, I'm forgetting the name of <laughs> the boulders, the boulders. Thank you. Yeah. And um, uh, it, we had to submit a letter of intent to apply by October 1st. And, um, but I spoke with the uh, grant coordinator at DCR and um, it has to be on uh, public land. And I explained that, you know, this was a social justice neighborhood and that the property owners were in favor of us doing the work, but um, it, was an, it was a no-go. So, that was disappointing. Um, and so, yeah, so it's it's dropped at the moment. Um, we've missed the, the deadline now. Um, it was gonna be a push, but I was excited and willing to do it. But um, so we'll have to find some other way to do planting at the boulders, if that is still of interest to the um, committee or um, yeah, find, if there are, I, I don't know that there are any social justice neighborhoods that are municipally owned um, in Amherst. Um, that would be our only other option in the future. Yeah, I'll just add, in addition, I would almost presume that if there is 
social justice neighborhoods in Amherst that are town owned streets that the town, I imagine, has planted on them at some point, um, or we have or whatever. Um, my thought was, what about the idea of like, is the committee allowed to do like a GoFundMe type thing? That way we're not using town or committee funds, but we can still get funding to say we're doing this planting in this specific neighborhood um, and see if don't, don't donors would be interested in it. I don't know, Alan, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it would be possible to do that. Um, I'd have to, I'd have to ask, you know, accounting how that would work um, or how we would keep the money separate from trees from the money that comes in for the tree fund. Um, so I can look into that. You know, there, there is another opportunity coming up this spring or this winter. Um, TD Bank, um, I think it's TD Bank, does an environmental justice grant in coordination with the National Arbor Day Foundation. So that money I know can be used on private property for planting trees. And they they offer it to communities that are Tree City USA communities. So um, I, I started looking for the application, but it looks like it's not up right now. Um, so I'll keep my ears open. They usually send, I usually get a, um, a notice from them when they open up the grant uh, application. So I think that was, you know, 10 or $15,000, something like that, possibly um, for trees that could be used on private property. Yeah. That, that sounds promising. Yeah. Is there any way we can work? I know it's sort of a national property management company that, you know, owns the boulders, but is there any way to work with them to get them to, I mean, it's one thing to be like, yeah, you can plant trees, but like, <laughs> to have buy-in from them or yeah. support yeah. from them, you know, it really, you know, it, it's in desperate need of shade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, well, and, you know, we go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, that's an excellent idea. You know, why not ask these million dollar, multi million dollar yeah. property management companies if they could afford to buy, you know, you know, 12, 15 trees, whatever, for each one of their their properties? You know, if the committee is saying, look, you buy them, we'll plant them. Um, and train provide training for your for your staff to maintain them you know uh, for years to come so that's an excellent idea is to see what you know why should it all be a one way <laughs> right. one way it's, it's their property it's yeah. going to increase their property value it's going to benefit their residents so why yeah. can't they throw in some money so ellen um we got the connection to the boulders through uh, mindy dom so i can check in with her she also has mentioned that she can get uh, earmarked money from the state government that we could use for all kinds of things. Okay. So I can, we can ask that her would, about funding. Okay, that would be great. I, I do have, I did look up the, the management company. They don't have any list of, you know, employees or anything, but um, we do have that email that Mindy forwarded. So we do have an email address we could write a letter to. Um, maybe if we do it in coordination with them and, as Alan said, provide a lot of the, the muscle, maybe they would be willing to to help make it a, a more livable place. Yeah, I think that's an excellent idea, Ellen and Alan. My one curiosity would be, could we like, do they have like a property management phone number or whatever we could call to be like, even send this idea up from within and be like, talk to an employee who sends the message to the property manager, whoever's at the top to be like, hey, could you help fund this? Well, I think we should wait and have Mindy go back. Okay. To and maybe she can use some of that earmark money she can send our way for that. Yeah. I'm not sure what the timing of the earmark is, earmarks are. Um, I, I did write up I, I did it very quickly, but I can spend a little more time, um, you know, writing up that letter of intent, but we can use some of that language. 
um, and forward that to Mindy and the property company, property management company as well. Yeah, great. Um, okay. And also, um, Ellen, why don't you um, research the TD Bank grants as well? Yep, happy to. Great, thank you. Okay, other comments on environmental justice neighborhood plantings? Hopefully we can get that as one of our spring plantings next year. Okay. Uh, Kendrick Park ash trees I put on the list because they are dying fast. The ones in Kendrick Park and the ones just um, up uh, North Pleasant Street from there. Alan? Uh, uh, realignment Park. <clears throat> realignment Park, yes. Um. Yeah, so those trees are obviously, you know, we, we're not treating those trees. They're going to succumb to emerald ash borer. Um, they probably will be, you know, half dead next year, right? This year, the tips, most of the upper crowns, you know, all the fine twigs are dead. Um, and next year, they will most likely be half dead. Um, so my, my plan for this winter was to, you know, remove some of the least healthy trees, um, get the ground, the stumps ground out, and then try to create some planting spaces to get new trees planted. Um, I, I will say, Henrik Park is one of the most challenging places in town to plant trees. Um, they get just abused. Um, and I assume it's the bar crowd at the end of the night walking back towards some um, campus because um, I just every tree I've planted there it gets ripped out of the ground it, the branches get ripped off it gets pushed halfway over um, gets snapped off um, so it's it's a it's a challenge there so I think you know we'd probably want to plant larger trees so that they can withstand the pressure a little more um, but uh, it's a it's a worthy place to plant trees and definitely definitely needs it after we lose those ash trees. Um, there was a um, conceptual sort of master plan done up, you know, way back in 2013, 2012, around there somewhere, for Kendrick Park. And it actually had the, um, the south end of Kennedy Park being turned into a lot of kind of brick hardscape area that was going to be used for kind of art displays, art fairs, um, performance space, some some kind of picnic dining areas as well. So um, I will probably pull that up and see. Um, as like with most master plans, it, it called for the removal of every tree there in order to install the hardscape and stuff. So um, since we're removing the trees anyway, we should probably look at it and see where to plant the new trees. Okay. Any other comments about uh, Kendrick Park and Realignment Park? Um, I just want to say that sounds like a prime candidate for those cages we're going to make in December. Um, and if we're going to be planting some larger caliper trees there, maybe we could make different sizes of the tree cages to mm. accommodate a larger tree and, and to discourage some of that vandalism so they can take root and, and stay when we plant them. We might need 10 foot tall tree um, tree guards, but yeah. <laughs> okay, that's small good. enough like caliber small enough caliber holes that the students don't just climb them yeah <laughs> all right um i have to go um but um when i i i figure i'll submit to you directly henry my hours for the month should i include the hours that i spent at that um downtown planning thing so that because I was like kind of there for trees or should we consider that separate? No, I think you can count that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Everyone, yeah, send me an email or a text with your hours, volunteer hours, everyone on the committee, everyone else I'll note that you were here at this meeting and add your hours and Brooke, I'll throw an extra for you for um, doing your, uh, the minutes. 
I thank you so much for doing that. Yeah. Uh, well, done. wait till you see them before you compliment me. That's all right. Uh, wait, you know, once the meeting's done, if you can get them to me by email as soon as you can, that'd be great. You bet. Yeah. Okay. A few more things, uh, old ongoing items, which probably nothing's happening. Um, B City and Town Hall Garden. Britt's not here. We can't talk about that. Ellen, anything new on the Mary Maple table? Nope. Nothing. Okay. And Bennett's not here to talk about the website update. Uh, state level initiatives, um, I haven't really done anything about. So I'll pass on that for now. And Sarah, significant tree ordinance. No, no progress. Okay. Well, that's all that I have on the agenda. Does anyone have any other comments or anything else that wasn't anticipated? I was just going to say that the solar bylaw is still working its way through like the, oh, what's the name of that committee? The town services and outreach committee of the town council. Okay. My understanding. Uh, Patrick uh, or um, Orion, do you have any comments? You would have to unmute to talk. Nothing for me, no. Okay. All right, well, thank you everyone for coming. Um, October 19th on Northampton Road. Uh, Alan, are we gonna start down toward um, University Drive? Yes, I think we will start down there and work our way up one side and then down the other side. Okay, so you can probably park um, on Snell Street there, the other side of University Drive. And um, we'll work our way up planting trees along Northampton Road. Um, yeah, Patrick and Orion, please join. Gina, it'd be lovely to have you back again. So uh, thank I, you, everyone. I had a quick question. The yes. one side, the South University Drive Island has trees, but the North University Drive, like regular university by the big Y, that island does not have trees. Is there room there for trees or not? Alan, I don't think there's room, but maybe. Oh, sir. I've always I've thought about putting trees there. There's a bit of a line of sight issue there with um, the uh, big Y plaza. Um, they, you know, are are very concerned about people being able to see the buildings and their signage. <laughs> so I see. Um, okay. What about further up, like towards the light? Um that median with uh um the median towards like where the five college realtors building is. Uh, do you mean on on uh, Northampton Road? It's on University Drive, but it's with the intersection of Northampton Road. And on the island on the Snell Street side has trees and the island on the U Drive side does not. Right. So the island, the traffic island um, was where I had thought about putting trees, but. Oh, I see. Okay. They don't. Got it. They've, they've expressed a lot of interest in beautifying that area with shrubs. Oh. <laughs> no trees. Um, okay. So yeah. just more weeding, I see. Yep. Cool. Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for coming. And sorry again about the delay and the confusion and a lot of people not being able to be seen. But um, we'll meet again next month on second Tuesday, and we'll see you at the planting in a week and a half. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, thank everybody. You. Bye. Thank you. I guess I have to end the meeting to have it end.